Nationwide has done the only poll in Jamaica measuring the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it raises several points, Apko. One that stood out to me is how politics has impacted our collective response to the pandemic. So in the silence of your own thoughts, ask yourself whether your response to the messaging from the Minister of Health and Wellness would be different if the minister was PNP or any other P. Has the venom of politics, Apko, struck the very heart of our survival to cripple an effective COVID-19 response? That is where my mind's at. For even the blind can see that a COVID-19 visit does not discriminate. And it has had a profound effect on education, public health, and the economy. So the nationwide blue dot poll seeming to suggest that our current predicament can be explained by understanding how partisan politics has shaped the response to COVID-19 and our behavior is of a concern. The poll found that respondents who are not aligned with either party were least willing to be take the vaccine, whereas only one in every five were willing. On the other hand, PNP supporters also reported a low desire for uptake. One in four persons were willing. JLP supporters were almost twice as likely as persons with no affiliations at all to take the vaccine. So it seems rather clear that we're living in the glare of our political tribal existence that has transcended our lethargic and partisan response to crime. Our tribal nature, Apka, has not only alienated voters, but alienated those very people, our neighbors, friends, and family who need to be protected from the real effects of COVID-19. And it seems that the independents who are neither P cannot be bothered with politics, so they have no trust and faith in any information coming from the government which could save their lives. I pondered that the threat of mass fatalities would have perhaps been one of the things in this pandemic that would have allowed our leaders to see it as an opportunity to rise above their differences and put people first. And sadly, the polls suggest that COVID is viewed really along party lines. <sighs> our leaders seem intent on using the consequences of the uncertainty of the pandemic to score points. And I will confess, I will concede even, that I harbored hopes, Abka, that in the face of mass fatalities, we would pull up our big girl or our big boy socks and cooperate to save lives. Rather than working together to overcome the impact of a dilapidated public health system, our leaders are blaming and asking for an inquiry during a global oxygen crisis. And it crossed my mind. Before we condemn the government for failing to adequately plan for the pandemic, may I ask a question? As a check and balance of the government, when COVID-19 struck Jamaica in March of last year, did we, the media or anyone ask, remind or tell the government to check the oxygen supplies? Why do we assume that our approval or disapproval to policies and programs are only worth something when we agitate about how much money is being spent? Because to my mind, Abka, effective planning requires that we look at all our needs and tell the leader what will be required. And no leader is an owl. He should not be expected to have 360 vision. And that's why we have technocrats, experts, the media, and an opposition. So I was wondering this morning, can three truths exist in the same time? And I think they can. The country ran out of oxygen during a pandemic. This happened during a global oxygen shortage. And those who knew or ought to know that supplies of oxygen were short held this knowledge to their chest. So do we need an inquiry for that? Because to my mind, where we are, an inquiry will not get us far, and given the uncertainty of the pandemic, the monies for an inquiry will be best spent handling the current issue of effective communication to counter misinformation so that we can all survive. I think we should exert our energies in that regard so that we can appear to be working together to get things done. But as a result of our own political experience, I sincerely understand the apathy of those who don't trust the messages from the government. And I can't blame them for thinking that COVID is just politics, since as the pandemic flares, we clamor for the resignation of the Minister of Health and Wellness, even though we know that in the epidemic of Chick V, the leadership was not held accountable for having known, it seems, two years in advance, that Chick V was more than likely going to affect Jamaica. So have we not learned that if we challenge leadership, we must either have a better precedent of leadership or a better substitute to put in the game? And if we lack one or both, we should flip the script and provide a better alternative or offer a better solution that allows leadership to prove itself worthy. 
And if we can't do that, perhaps we can simply pretend it's an election for our lives and get the people on message collectively. Because I'm tired. Every time our leaders squabble, it's we the people who suffer. The media's fanning of the flames of division in the period of our history where we seek to create a conflict between the vaccinated or the unvaccinated, between the educated and the uneducated, cannot be in the best interest of our country. And I'm not a political pundit, simply a Jamaican who has nowhere to run. This is a defining moment in our nation's history. It's not a political spectacle. It's a public health crisis that requires all our leaders to put the country above themselves and work for each other. At the very least, working together holds the great potential of also restoring some faith in the system of governance. It's perhaps this point where we say, why we can't all just get along? Let's all pretend for one moment that we all have the same goal, which is to save lives. It can't possibly be that there is no point where we can take off our lens of being green or orange to appreciate that our lives matter and it doesn't matter where we come from. That at the end of the day, in order to you to have something to govern, you got to have people living to govern them. If we get nothing from this poll, we have to appreciate that our divisions on a political basis is getting us nowhere. At the very least, what it is doing is ensuring that people will not be interested at all in governance. And that too has its own failures. Because if we're not interested, we won't hear. And if we can't hear, we won't know what's in our best interest. To my mind, our leaders must learn APCA to read the room. In a pandemic, people need hope. You don't inspire hope by politicizing the uncertainty of a pandemic. That's what a pandemic is. It's uncertain. It means that you will not know what was going to happen next. The most you can do is get everybody on the same page so that we can respond collectively for our own best interest. A pandemic is a kind of crisis that gives rise to great leaders. And it is the kind of crisis that reveals poor leadership. Great leaders show no preference for party lines, race or class. It's almost like being saved by Superman, you know? When Superman swoops in, nobody asks whether or not he's from another planet. They just want to be saved. And that's what we want today. That's what we want for 2021, 2022. We want to be saved from a pandemic. So what's the point of being political about how we handle the pandemic? Why not share the ideas? Why not come together and show that we can work together to survive? Then you can squabble after if it's still in your system. But that is what is going to make the difference between nations who thrive and survive because leaders cooperate in the midst of a pandemic and they cast off the shred of the very things that make them different. It's high time we stop using people, their fears, and their ignorance for political gains. Instead, I think we need to try to see how we can get through this together. And perhaps our legislators could be scrolling through our legislation to find something that could be used to curb misinformation. We should be collaborating on getting people to vaccination sites, collaborating on getting people out just like we do when we have elections. We should be collaborating to try to find them the closest point to save their lives. Perhaps even using electioneering machinery to deliver the best and relatable information on COVID-19. We've got jingles when it comes to elections. We have marketing campaigns when we want people to buy things. And when we want people to listen to us, we know exactly what to do. Let's put all of that together so that we can survive. So it seems to me at least that the COVID response has not yet been crippled by our politics, but our politics has certainly delivered a body blow, which if not treated with an urgent, creative and collaborative response, our health, education and economic systems will surely be crippled for the next generation. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is a performance for our lives and we must all work together 
to survive a curtain call. That's what's on my mind. <laughs>